So uh, with that, let's let's do our final story of uh, of the day. Uh, and the question that some people are probably asking is, um, what are what are the, the strikers' legal rights? Do they even have a legal right? Um, to strike. And now this, um, a lot of this information, pretty much all this information comes from a gentleman by the name of uh, Kevin Gustafson. And uh, he was interviewed by Anya Parmpil uh, from The Gray Zone, uh, which I highly recommend. I highly recommend you guys go check out The Gray Zone. Uh, fantastic publication. They do a lot of great shows. They do a lot of great in-depth uh, investigative journalism uh, that you won't get um, you know, in, in your corporate mainstream news, uh, ex exactly like this. So it kind of reveals the truth about what, what we're going to see. Um, so the question, you know, she asked her, like, what are the, what are the rights of the, of the strikers that we're seeing that are striking Amazon that are, uh, going up against Instacart shipped at McDonald's, the Pittsburgh sanitation workers that went on strike. Um, and what he said was, first of all, strikes are legal, that it, it's within your legal right to strike um, under the National Labor Relations Act that made strikes legal. Now, there were some provisions that they put into it as well, uh, you know, to, to protect corporations because that's what you gotta do. When you're, when you're making labor relations law, you should really think about whether corporations that make billions of dollars really have rights or not, right? And this goes into that whole thing, well, corporations are people, is it? Is it if I if I throw a rock at McDonald's, this this is it gonna bleed? <laughs> or are you just gonna replace a window? <laughs> is it a person? Uh let's just make up what definitions of words are. Profit is never mind. <laughs> I was gonna go into a whole big fucking thing, but I decided not to. Uh so now, there are two different kinds of strikes under the National Labor Relations Act. Uh, one is unfair labor practices, which has a different, uh, different rule, different standards um, than what they call economic strikers, right? Um, unfair labor practices are like, hey, you're not providing us with enough breaks. You're, you're working people too hard. The quotas that you're trying to ask us to meet are too much uh, versus the economic strikers that are saying you're not paying us enough. Right, uh, minimum wage needs to go up. We're we're gonna have to negotiate better pay for everybody involved in this situation. So uh, something along those lines. That, that's that's. But to me, um, not paying somebody enough for the work that they do is unfair labor practices. I think they kind of fit into one of the same. So having these two distinctions is um, a little bullshit. And I think the provision. Uh, primarily was there to try to benefit work or, or try to benefit corporations uh, from maybe saying, okay, we'll improve your, you know, your work thing, but it's, it, but we're not going to pay you as much. The same thing as, as saying, well, we'll increase the, we'll, or we'll decrease the hours uh, that you, you know, down from 10 hours to eight hours a day, but we're not going to pay you a lot more. We're not going to pay you the same amount. It's the same thing. It, it allows them to, to give a trade off and you know so it's like do you want do you want respect and dignity do you want your human rights as a person well great then we don't have to pay you that much or if we do have to pay you more then we're going to have to add these other provisions and make the workplace a little bit more dangerous and a little bit more fatiguing um and to me it's it's all you know all under unfair labor practices because if you're not going to pay somebody enough money then I mean, we're tipping into the into the realm of slavery here, right? Labor for free, labor for 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 not enough money is essentially what we're tipping into, right? Like it's literally a dollar sign away from going into slavery. So, you know, uh, and is that fair labor practices? So, don't they just kind of go and become one thing? To me, that they are. To me, an economic strike is an unfair labor practice strike. So strikers are, you know, because of these sort of distinctions that are made, uh, it's important for uh, strikers to behave themselves. Is that's, that's what Kevin Gustafson points out, is 
Um, there's a lot of uh, legal jargony stuff that can be used against strikers. So it's important to behave yourself, to use personal conduct, right? Um, it, you know, personal conduct can be used against you is essentially what he said. So if you are inciting violence or if your rhetoric seems a little too inflammatory or, um, you know, uh, if you block, like even blocking people from going, like let's say there's a percentage of people that don't want to join the strike at these Amazon warehouses and they block the gates, that's, that can all make your strike illegal. They can use that against it to make your strike illegal and then make sure that you don't get to come back to the job uh, and fire you. And once you're fired, you don't represent that organization. And that complicates things even more. Now, um, a lot of the strikes we're seeing now are um, are called wildcat strikes. Um, I think you guys might have seen this term being used around a bunch, right? Wildcat strikes were, well, they're, they're, look at these wildcat strikes that are everywhere. Um, I, it's, it's, it's not like a, it, at first I thought it was kind of like a sports term being used for labor relations, uh, because the only thing I'd really do about a wildcat was like, that was like a sports thing is, is there's like a team called the wildcats. Uh, somebody yelled at me, uh, yelled out at me at a show once I was, I was at a show and I said something and they were like, fucking wildcats. <laughs> I was just like, what's happening? I don't know. I'm scared. Um, but uh, wildcat strikes are basically the, the the type of strikes that you saw with Amazon, where they were basically at lunchtime. They were like, "Yo, fuck this noise," and they and they pieced out. Uh, you know, I guess it's because it's an unpredicted strike, and wildcats are like unpredicted, uh, much like wildcat fans, who are also unpredicted. That show up to some sometimes they show up to uh, a, a comedy show, um, and and they and they just yell the word wildcat at you over and over again. See, that's what happens with these fucking sports mascots, man. Is like these people that get way too excited about sports is like they just yell whatever the fucking catchphrase of the every time I go through Alabama, it's fucking roll tide, baby. Roll tide. It's just like I don't I don't know what's happening. The tide is rolling. Should we do something? Have we built some levees? I don't understand. You know but the wildcat strikes are just unpredicted strikes, right? They kind of just happen. Um, they are uh, considered de facto unlawful and have no protections under the National Labor Relations Act. They're still legal strikes, but they're unlawful. Uh, it, it's sort of the, the, the way that it, uh, I understood it. It, it seems very confusing. Um, it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, so in this sort of situation, this is what I was talking about earlier is like, we have to stand with these strikers because they're really not protected by the law that's set to protect them. Uh, so, you know, we have to stand in solidarity with them. So when they, when they come up with a class action lawsuit or something or, or the corporation, but it's, this is what happened with Amazon is they got, fi the, the guy got fired, right? Uh, Chris Smalls, he got fired. Uh, for some bogus charge uh, that they're not going to investigate, they're not going to look into. So we kind of have to stand with our fellow working class, uh, working class people. Um, now, the other thing that that Kevin Gustafson points out is that the reason for the strike uh, should be equal to the effect it's going to have uh, via striking. So basically, um, why you're striking the result of that strike should be equivalent to the reason why you're striking, right? So for example, I know that kind of sounds very confusing what I just said. Um, and it's one of those things where in my head it made sense. And then I said it into like real words and it didn't. Uh, so the reason why a lot of the, the gig economy workers like Instacart shipped, um, you know, uh, why Amazon, uh, McDonald's, all these people are striking is because they're, they're in unsafe work conditions. Um, Amazon had a case of the virus and they had to, they, they told Chris Malls not to fucking tell anybody. Um, so that's an unsafe work condition. You're putting people in danger because people, you know, because what some fucking suburb suburbanite has to get a, 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 a funny wine glass in under 24 hours. 
that you no, know, you don't fucking need it. It'll take a week. Shut the fuck up and relax, right? Like that's not that big of a deal. The worker's life is not as important as Chuchki merchandise. Um, and you know, if if there's a toilet paper shortage, uh, maybe don't incite panic. So, what's more important in this situation? Two day shipping or one day shipping? Or in workers' lives. Same thing with Instacart and shipped. Is what's more important? Getting your groceries or making sure that the people getting your groceries are not infected and thus infecting you. Right? Same thing with the, even if you even if the chutchkeys are that important to you, if they're infected because the company didn't take the right precautions. Isn't that more important? So wouldn't you stand by the strikers to be like, yeah, you know what? You're putting the cons consumer at risk as much as you are the worker. So, you know, what, and, and the thing with Amazon specifically is they weren't treating their employees well to begin with. They weren't treating their employees like trash to begin with. <laughs> That's what they were doing, right? Like their work conditions were terrible. You had, you had people peeing in bottles. You had people getting fired. Uh, people that, like passing out of exhaustion. I mean, it was basically b equivalent of working in a in a uh, in industrial factory in the eighteen hundreds. It's no different than that. We've literally come two hundred years from the industrial revolution, and Jeff Bezos somehow took the work conditions all the way back to that era. He he basically used the hundred and sixty five billion dollars he had to jack off on the uh, the the labor movement. Him and his dumb, stupid bald head. I really don't like that guy. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell. Like every time we fucking talk about Amazon, I just fucking go off and rant and rave about him because I because you should because you should because that dude is a heartless monster. <laughs> now, the other thing is, um, is this strike specific to the industry? That's another way that you make a really successful strike, uh, being being very specific to the industry, right? So, so right now we're seeing a lot of these essential personnel, which a lot of them are um, gig economy workers. They are delivery personnel. They are uh, people that work in manufacturing. But it it goes beyond just that specific industry, right? It it, it needs to go from from that to. I mean, healthcare workers are also at risk of the same thing. Um, you know, so I talked about this last week is, are we going to see a healthcare strike? Are we going to see a bunch of healthcare professionals uh, that are going to come out and say, no, um, we're not cool with what's happening. We're not cool with you stirring up a panic and taking away essential needs. We're not cool with you. Would you just, just take like the federal government is just taking masks and ventilators for what fucking why? Right. So, are healthcare workers going to strike? And, you know, is that going to create a bigger ripple effect? Um, now, America has some very strange... I mean, we're, we're one of the only countries that has a lot of odd labor laws. Again, mostly uh, the labor laws are odd because they're trying to protect corporations over the working class people, right? So Germany, for example, um, have unions that represent an entire work sector meaning there is like one giant uh, auto manufacturing union, one giant healthcare union, one giant, um, you know, fast food union. And uh, America does not because the United States likes to call that a monopoly, which is false. That's not technically what a monopoly is. Um, but, you know, Jeff Bezos can have a monopoly by running Amazon, owning the Washington Post and Whole Foods and Palantir, which is a cybersecurity company that's been used to uh, use facial recognition software to deport uh, undocumented immigrants from the Amazon warehouses. Yeah, he can just have a monopoly on all of it. He can have a monopoly on groceries. He can have a monopoly on consumer goods. He can have a monopoly on journalism and, and, and controlling the narrative. And he can have a monopoly on cybersecurity. And that's fine. That's different. But unions, unions looking out for, for the average working class people by sector by sector, that's fucking crazy. You are crazy. Don't you dare do that shit. Yeah. America has laws that protect corporations. That's what they do. Their labor laws are, they protect corporations. Um, so what can we take away from all this is, is they have a legal right to strike. Uh, the way that they strike is important and, uh, and they kind of have to be on really good behavior, but you know, Jeff Bezos doesn't. 
Jeff Bezos could literally go out there um, and uh, in front of all these strikers, pull out a machine gun and pretend to shoot all of them. And every and and they would be like, this guy's trying to protect his investments. That's what he's trying to do. Okay. And I mean, what was he supposed to do? What was it? Give these people a raise, inc better their working conditions. You know, I mean, do you know how much turtle wax made out of real turtles costs? It like uh, a lot. So, and that's what he needs to wax his uh, dome. Are you asking him to sacrifice that and use what? Pe like peasant turtle wax? You sick son of a bitch. That's how they treat them. So, you know, strikes are legal, but they don't treat them as legal. They treat them as criminal um, offenses. They get violent towards them. Uh, the strikers have to, the strikers are not held a, in the same um, same regard as, as the corporations are. They're the different rules apply. Corporations are given more rights uh, than, um, than uh, strikers are. Uh, we do have a law, but the law barely goes anywhere. So once again, the, the theme of this whole episode has, has sort of been uh, we have to stand in solidarity with each other because that is our strength. That is what scares the shit out of these elites the most is when we all fucking come together and we all stand by each other. We all start taking care of each other. That's when it's that's what that's when they start freaking out. When when community organization goes up, that's when they start getting scared. So, you know. Look out for these strikes, because I don't think we're going to see the end of them. Um, and I think we are veering into a pretty heavy general strike kind of direction. Uh, and when that happens, I hope that you guys will stand in solidarity of your fellow strikers. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and uh, downloading websites, if that's that's if that's a way that you can you say that, uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me, and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do, and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.